how to practically apply stoicism in your everyday life so that you literally stop giving a fudge. Guys, it's time for us to prioritize putting our energies all in the right places by learning from how others have done it in the past. By the way, hi, I'm Patty, and if you guys are enjoying my video, please feel free to leave a comment and also subscribe to my channel as that would be a great help. Other than that, let's get started. One, be tolerant with others and strict with yourself as quoted by Marcus Aurelius. See, the most important thing about life is that we have zero control on how other people around us want to show up in their lives, but we have 100% control on how we are going to show up for ourselves. Of course, we can always tell people what to do and what we expect from them, but at the end of the day, they have the choice to leave us. They have their own choice to go and pursue what they want to pursue, and we cannot stop them from choosing what they think is best for them. However, if we are strict with ourselves, if we are the one who is able to show up to our own schedules, discipline ourselves to be consistent on our journey, then the person who is benefiting the most from this journey is yourself. So therefore, as much as it's tempting to put our expectation on somebody else and hope that if they do something well, it's going to make us feel good, it is so much more effective for us to set the high standards for ourselves and adapt to those standards so that we are the one who leads others by example. And as a result, we never get disappointed because we are focused on our own journey and we are allowing other people who want similar things to us to follow us along the process. Which leads to teaching too. The happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. How you interpret different situations will affect how you feel towards it. 99% of our situations are actually neutral, but how we assign our meanings to those things is what causes us to suffer. So in order for us to feel detached from every single circumstances that distresses us, it's important that we interpret those circumstances in a way that allows us to feel relieved. For example, if somebody has let you down at work, instead of thinking that this person has no respect for you, instead think to yourself, I am learning from this circumstance and I'm now allowing myself to choose the best people who can work for me. It's interesting because every single moment of our life, we have the power to choose how we want to feel in this moment right now. But so many bosses, so many parents, so many relatives and friends get hung up on the fact that this person has to behave this way in order for me to feel whole and complete in this instance. Whereas you have the power to eliminate people that are not right for you. You have the power to walk away from situations that don't serve you because you always prioritize your own well-being first. And because you've eliminated the context that makes you feel distressed. Therefore, you are improving your internal environment and making it easier for you to think quality thoughts, which will then manifest a quality life experience for you. So before you get triggered by anything outside of you, always remember that you are the one steering your own ship. You are the one that's the captain of your life and you do not have to be a slave to your thoughts, but instead you can conquer your mind and make it work for you. Three, if you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid as quoted by Epictetus. See, the thing with us dwelling in our own egoic state and refusing to be a sponge to constructive feedback is that we end up doing certain things in a certain way where our ego confines our actions. But if we are able to let go of our egoic mind and allow ourselves to learn from the constructive criticisms, then we are able to adapt our approaches and work in a much better way. Now, for my personal case, I've always personally believed that I was already good at many, many things, but it was the where I let down my guard and allow myself to learn that actually I'm still beginning at this area of my life. And that doesn't reflect on the quality of the person that I am, but it just reflects the fact that in this particular area of my life, I can still keep developing. And the more you have this growth mindset towards life where it's okay to be seen as a beginner, it's okay to be seen as stupid temporarily because you don't know exactly what you are doing yet, the faster you will improve. Not being attached to the identity of a perfectionist is what actually makes our craft improve so much more. So the next time you feel like, I'm scared of receiving criticism, I'm scared of being seen as a fool, I'm scared of asking silly questions so I can learn. I want you to know that this is just your egoic mind trying to protect you from getting hurt, trying to protect you from feeling rejected. But as long as you open yourself up to learn about things like a sponge, you would no longer be that beginner who is stuck at level one, but you are continually progressing to level three, four, five, and six, just because you are not scared to look silly by giving it a shot. Four, demand not that things happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do, which is very similar to the quote by Jim Rohn where he says, don't wish that things are easier, 
wish that you get better. There are some times in your life where you just cannot control the adversity in your outer life experience. When I go and apply for a job and I go and interview with my hiring manager, as much as I thought I was being authentic and confident, I can't control the fact that people may think that my authentic self is not the right fit for their company. And these things are not worth your sadness. They are not worth you dwelling upon your self-worth. They are not worth upon you feeling rejected. That's why Epictetus says it's about changing how you interpret these adversities to make it work in your favor. So that the next time you've given your 1000% effort, but the results are still not reflecting what you deserve, you can actually feel content and whole within yourself that you've given it your best shot and whatever happens in the outer reality is not relevant to your self-worth. At the end of the day, you became a more confident person by putting yourself out there. So it's always going to be a win for you. No matter if you think this circumstance says no right now, it's actually not a no, but it's actually that you deserve better. You have better things aligned for you. And this particular moment is just a practice ground for you to keep evolving yourself, to become more confident and resilient so that you can handle the real thing that is on its way to you. 5. It is not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It's because we do not dare that things are difficult, as quoted by Seneca. And this pretty much means that it is not because the ocean water is hard for you to conquer. It's because you are scared of conquering the waves that the experience feels so hard for you to do. This was something that I really resonated with when I couldn't swim. When I used to assign excessive meaning to the thought of swimming in ocean water like I can't sustain myself in the water properly. I never reached one lap before. I can't even conquer this baby lane. The waves are going to wash me out. I'm going to drown. That's why the experience was so difficult for me. But it was it was only when I dared to challenge these old thoughts about swimming. It was only when I challenged my inner identity that I am no longer Patty who couldn't swim and therefore I allow myself to transcend those fears by conquering those waves. That's when swimming in the ocean water became effortless to me and I actually did reach 2000 meters in the end. See the thing is a lot of us do have the thought of wanting to take risks but there are so many internal dialogues that hold us back from you going for that dream career, from you starting that passion project because you are conditioned to believe that you don't deserve to succeed in it. See, social conditioning is such an interesting thing in that if people around us, let's just say the five closest people around us says that you can't start a YouTube channel, you can't earn six figures in a year without a nine to five job because nobody else in our social circle has done it, then you are prone to believe that you can never earn six figures without a nine to five job simply because your inner identity is attached to the version of you who does not dare to overcome that fear. So my question to you is, are you ready to let go of all the social conditioning that has trapped you in the subconscious belief that you don't deserve the best of the best in your life? The best of the best requires you to have courage. The best of the best requires you to overcome your fear. So are you finally ready to let go and dare to do things that you once thought it was difficult for you? The more you can adapt yourself to do things that are difficult, the easier those experiences become and therefore you will start conquering your reality and see everything as effortless because you are capable of overcoming your fear no matter how big they are. 6. If you really want to escape the things that harass you, what you're really needing is not to be in a different place but to be a different person. Now this cannot be further from the truth in that our external reality is a direct reflection of our internal state. So no matter where you take yourself physically, even if you go to the most luxurious place and you are feeling temporarily relaxed and calm for the first two hours, if you are still choosing to dwell or be attached to the inner identity of somebody who's always living in the past or being anxious about the future, then that's who you will manifest in that exact luxury location. So therefore, there are no other places that can stop you from dwelling in thoughts where you shouldn't be dwelling in. But instead, it is your 100% responsibility to work on shifting your inner identity to be the person who makes being present a normal experience in your life. We are conditioned to go to school, to choose subjects that have no relevance in helping us conquer adult years. Then we are taught to go to university to then take on subjects that do not actually help us build exponential wealth. Then after that, we are taught 
told to go and choose a job or go and find a job, they will pay us the bare minimum. And even if you get paid six figures, but you may have to work more than eight hours for those six figures. And in order for you to feel relief of this life, you have to find some sort of escape to look forward to, whether it's that two weeks vacation or that one month vacation on your annual leave. And people are living like this year after year after year. So even if you get to use that annual leave to go to the vacation, but if your inner identity is still anchored in the version of you where you feel like life cannot be perfect, life cannot go my way, I don't deserve to have lucky girl syndrome, I don't deserve to create the exact experiences I want because this is how things have always been. And therefore, no matter where you feel physically take yourself to, whether it's the club, the parties, the beach, the vacation. You cannot stop yourself feeling like this is not enough. It all starts with your internal self that the minute you become somebody different, even in the most mundane and boring setting, your experience towards it will change and you'll find yourself being more present and less analytical of how things should unfold for your life in order for you to experience true happiness. Seven, man conquers the world by conquering himself as quoted by Zeno. Think about the time where you really want to achieve that A grade or you really want to secure that dream job. I can guarantee that if you were able to achieve that goal, it wasn't exactly that you worked a lot, lot harder, but it was because you shift your inner identity. You became the version of you who could effortlessly have the thing. If you can master your mind, then the whole world can belong to you. We are so focused on spending more hours crafting our skill set, hustling and striving, when actually we could use the Wu Wei approach to enter the flow state and effortlessly create the results that we want. The thing about conquering yourself is actually about finding inner stillness. It's being in a place where you are present and in harmony with the current moment to the point where that flow state allows you to take inspired action. And through that inspired action, you are constantly winning every single milestone in order for you to reach your one big goal. So the next time you're feeling like something outside of you is so difficult for you to accomplish, give yourself permission to accept that you can conquer yourself by doing less. Conquer yourself by finding inner stillness first, being completely present in what you're doing right now. So therefore, every single physical action that you take is aligned to the end state. It is no use for us to execute all of our action from our old self, where we are using so much force and so much resistance to achieve a certain goal. But if you work on leveling up yourself, conquering your inner identity so that as the person who already lives in the end state, no matter which action you take, no matter which strokes you take while you swim, no matter which steps you take as you run, you are living in the end state and you are effortlessly creating this through the flow state. So again, guys, before you conquer that goal, you actually want to come back and conquer your mind. Allow your focus to be planted in one space and allow yourself to quantum jump into that reality where it is normal for you to achieve this goal and you will see everything harmoniously unfold itself for you. Eight, well-being is realized in small steps but it is no small thing. Now this truly resonated with me when I stopped trying to strive for an outer result and really prioritize my inner self-care. See, when we are so immersed in the social conditioning where we have to work really, really hard and neglect our inner well-being to achieve a certain result in order to be worthy, then we don't realize that those small micro actions that we take to better our health go such a long way. So let's just look at this in terms of rewiring your subconscious programming. Let's just say every single night before you sleep, you start turning on the affirmation tracks that reinforces the new beliefs you wish to have by yourself. Every single night for at least 10 minutes, you are repeating to yourself, I deserve to be loved. I deserve to be accepted exactly for how I am. I'm always conquering my day. I can overcome any challenges that comes my way. I am the best. I deserve to feel relaxed. I am beautiful inside out. I am radiant. Imagine you compounding this practice every single night for 10 minutes a night. How much will your life change by the end of 365 days of you doing this? And I guess this is what Zeno means where self-care is an incremental step. A little bit of love poured into your cup goes such a long way. In the first one to two days, you may not see the difference in affirming positive thoughts into your mind. But as you compound these small wins on a day-to-day -day basis, as you keep repeating to yourself how worthy you are just through your internal dialogue alone, how much would your life change even by the end of 90 days? How would you be inspired to do everything differently by the end of 90 days when your predominant thoughts are, 
I am worthy of love. I deserve to rest in my feminine energy. I don't have to work hard because I am whole within myself. Therefore, your interaction with other people will change. How you set your boundaries will change. Who you allow into your life, what you choose to invest your time in, what thoughts you choose to dwell upon, and what you choose to worry about will be completely different when your inner identity is now anchored in the version of you who truly knows her self-worth. And this all starts from the small step to your well-being, which eventually leads to a big and profound shift in your life. 9. The greatest thing in the world is self-sufficiency as quoted by Guy Musonius Rufus. We are also conditioned to believe that we never have enough because if somebody else who we know has the things that we don't have, we start to feel like we are left behind. We feel like there is something lacking in us simply because we don't possess the things that we think will increase our self-worth. Whether it's an investment property, a new Chanel handbag, a luxury vacation, a fiance or getting married. All of these things don't define our self-worth. In fact, I even remember watching a doctor documentary of the kids that lived in the mountain in Thailand and they looked like the happiest people on this planet. Even though most of the luxuries that we have in the urban society is not accessible for them, but they are filled with inner peace. They have food to eat, warm clothes to wear, a home to live in, and all the plants and crops and nature all around them. It is enough for them to live a content and rich life. Yet the more you are consumed in the world where people are advertising the importance of having technology in your life, people are advertising the importance of having certain cosmetic brands, certain handbags, certain designer clothes, and it never feels enough because we are constantly advertised to things that reinforces our sense of lack. I want you to really take a step back and realize that if tomorrow you are cut off from all these social media connections. If tomorrow you are just by yourself and you already have food to eat, you already have access to clean water, you have a place to sleep in, you have the space to walk and access to nature. Gosh, that is more than enough for you to live a content and happy life. And the more you can actually realize that without being like, I'm settling for less, but more like I feel whole in this present moment because I'm not snooping through what other people has, then that's when you have access to creative flow, to think of better business ideas, to improve your skill set, to learn something new and feel more better about yourself in the process. The more you evolve, the more access you have to better opportunities. And that's exactly what it looks like when your internal state is now radiating abundance, simply because you choose to feel self sufficient in this current moment right now. And finally, number 10. It is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. Now this is interesting because there are so many hidden miracles that could enter our life when we can surrender to the process and trust that we don't need to know everything, but we need to have faith on the unfolding of our life. If you think that you have everything in your life figured out, if you think that you already have certainty because you chose this career path, you made this decision and therefore your life is going to be perfect, then you are neglecting all the surprises, the miracles course and all the special unfolding that the universe has for you. See, do you guys agree that what makes life exciting is not knowing the possibilities that is out there for you? Stepping into the unknown and seeing things unfold in the way your mind can never comprehend. So therefore, there is this Thai saying where you want to position yourself as a half full cup, where 50% of your cup is filled with the knowledge that you already have, but you are leaving half of your cup empty to keep learning new things from people. And it's very interesting that when I used to be very driven by success, and money, I will actually neglect the wisdom from people that I don't perceive to be as successful. But when I do get to chat with them and listen to their perspective on life, I realize that there are still many things I can learn about people from all over the world, whether they're earning six figures, whether they're unemployed, whether they're homeless, all these people have their wisdom to share to us. And yes, of course, if people aren't successful in life, they can project negativity onto us. But even in that negativity, you are still learning something about them. So therefore, if you are able to open yourself to be like a glass half full, where you are open to any kind of new wisdom that could potentially help you evolve, then you are truly living an abundant life. So therefore, choose to open yourself up to new wisdoms. Choose to open yourself up to things that your mind cannot comprehend, and you will find so many more surprises and miracles in your life. Okay guys, these are the 10 stoic teachings that really helped me evolve and gave less fudge. The more I can apply these teachings to my everyday life, the more I am detached and the more excited I am to see miracles unfold in my life. Again guys, if you like this video, please feel free to subscribe and let me know what you guys want to see. I am so excited to keep growing with you on this journey and I can't wait to see you soon. Bye bye.